Yeah, I'm Jasmine. Um, 28 years old. Mother of a six-month-old baby boy. I've overcome a lot. Starting with three years ago, 2015, um, I was pregnant. I didn't know that I was. I went to the bathroom. I was feeling some pain, unbearable pain. I had to crawl to the bathroom. Went to the hospital to figure out what was going on. And I found out that I was pregnant. That's when I found out. Um, I was happy to hear that I was pregnant. I was, just got married that year. But in the same breath, I found out that it wasn't a good pregnancy. It was something that you call an atopic pregnancy where um, you're pregnant inside the tubes and the baby is not able to grow inside the tube. That was a lot all at once. So I had to go through an emergency surgery. I had to lose my left tube. So that made me feel scared because I'm like, okay, so now how am I going to get pregnant with one tube? 2016 comes around and I got pregnant again. So now I'm like, okay, I'm able to get pregnant. I'm not broke, one, two, I'm like I didn't feel whole anymore, but I was able to get pregnant again and I was very happy. My husband was happy. I was kind of nervous because each month that went on, it was like, okay, I'm doing this. This is going, it's going through. Everything's new. You're feeling new things. When I got to my eighth month, um, my son was due June 30th, my birthday. He decided he wanted to come early, um, June 1st. So I was feeling a little bit of kicking the day before and the night that night before I felt a lot of kicking but the day of I didn't feel anything but I had went through this before where I didn't feel anything and my mom would just tell me girl he's sleeping you know you don't have nothing to worry about my back was hurting it had been hurting all day but I was moving around. I was just like, maybe I've just been doing too much today. So I went to the bathroom and I saw blood. I got really nervous and I went to go tell my husband. We get to the hospital and I'm excited and nervous all at the same time. I was going to meet my baby boy. Got to the hospital, did a urine test. They, was checking, they were checking for the baby's heartbeat and... They were kind of hesitant and I could kind of see it on the nurse's face. So, you know, I'm just like fingers crossed, like, you know, telling myself everything's going to be okay. And everything was just so fast and just everybody was just moving. And the next thing I know is they're like, okay, we have to rush you in emergency C-section. So I'm like, okay, this is going to happen now, whether I'm ready or not. I got into the room and the doctor's like, I'm sorry to tell you um, this, but um, there's no baby. We can't find the heartbeat. And I'm looking at him like, what? What do you mean there's no baby? Just like that? Like, and it's like, okay, they're doctors, they'll figure it out. At this point, I'm just like, here we go again. <sighs> Another child. I immediately just stopped talking and I just was like, whatever. Do what you got to do.
the most important thing is I didn't want to disappoint my husband again. That once again, I couldn't hold up my end of the deal giving him a child. And those feelings were all over the place because not only was I laying in this bed thinking that I'm about to deliver my son and that wasn't happening anymore. I don't even know the words to find to tell you how I felt in that moment. I don't even know what they called it. It was something, they said fetal demise. I mean, I heard different things from different doctors. And I just felt like they were throwing different things at me because they did not know. They could not explain what had happened. And I just was like, whatever. I still had to deliver him naturally. And then all the questions that they're asking you, um, do you want to hold your baby? And at first, I didn't want to. Why would I? Why would I want to hold a baby that I'm not able to take home? But then I said to myself, this would be the last time that you'll ever hold him. And holding him for those eight months, I felt like I knew him. So I said, why not? I'll hold him. And I held my son, Egypt, for the first and last time. And I'm kind of actually glad that I did because if I didn't hold him, I probably would regret not holding him. It hurt. I went through many phases of loss. I was mad at myself. I was mad at the world. I was mad at my husband. Everything. I didn't want to work. I didn't want to do things that I normally would want to do. It was hard, but I had to be strong and I had to keep moving forward because I also had another child at home. My husband has a daughter from a pre previous relationship and she really looked up to me and, you know, it hurt her too knowing that she had also lost a brother. And it wasn't easy for me to be her mom anymore. It wasn't. It was like, oh, I lost my baby and you're still here and I still have to take care of you too. And at times I wasn't able she wanted to hug me. I didn't want to hug her back. She wanted to tell me it was okay. It wasn't okay. And I didn't want to hear that it was okay. 2017, I got pregnant again. So this is like the third time in a row. I got pregnant back to back. So I'm like, I'm tired. I'm tired now. But it's just like, I wanted a baby. And I... I was kind of trying to fill that void of not having my son. I held it inside for a long time because it was like, I don't want to be pregnant because I don't want to go through anything bad again. But it, it happened. It was there already. I knew it. So I just had to tell my husband. You know, we're pregnant again. So month in and month out, I was like, 
walking on eggshells. Um, the doctors told me that I was high risk and that, you know, I would need to take it easy. It was a lot. I felt like I lived at the hospital. But I said that I would do anything and everything that I had to do to bring this baby home. And I did. August the 2nd, 2018. Five pound. Baby boy. Asir Tao Richardson. Was born. I still was scared because me having to deliver his brother Egypt and him not coming out crying. I thought that I was going to have to push another baby out and he wasn't going to come out crying. But when he did, it was the happiest feeling ever. It was amazing. The I was just like, I did it. I've overcome everything that I said that I couldn't do. I thought I couldn't have any kids. I thought I was broke. I just, like, I, after trying and it not happening and when it would happen, I would just lose the baby. And now I'm holding a baby in my arms. He's crying. He's breathing. He's healthy. I was so happy. Who am I today? Stronger. And I won't give up. A better me. Living fear-free, worry-free, trauma-free. So that I can be a better mom for my son and my family.